Sometimes we might need to partition or break up our numbers. We're going to look at why we might do that soon, but first, let's look at how we might do it. One way is to think about the number and say it out loud. So I want you to have a go at reading this out loud. Even if you do it in your head, say the words. Did you say 458? Well, when we read it out, we actually hear each part of our number. We can hear that there's 458, and we could then write that as 400 plus 50 plus 8. And we know that's 458. So saying a number out loud helps us think about each part of that number. Now we can use objects and shapes to represent numbers as well. I've chosen these squares, and each square represents 100. Now some of you may know MAB blocks, so you might think of this as the flat, but if not, I want you to think of one green square being 100. So I've got four hundreds, and I've drawn four of them. The next part of my number is 60, or six tens. So I've got these sticks, or rods, that represent tens and I've drawn six of them. So I can see I've got four hundreds and six tenths, and the last digit is eight, eight units. So I've drawn little squares, and each little square represents one unit, or one. So I've drawn four hundred and sixty-eight. Four hundreds, six tens, and eight units. Now why would we do this? Well, what about if we needed to share that between two people? What if we needed to work out how much $468 was shared between two people? We could use our models or our shapes to share it between two, and then we would know how much each person could get. So let's see if we can share this between two. If we break their hundreds into two groups, each person gets two hundreds, our tens, each person gets three tens, and for our units, each person receives four units. So we can see that someone gets two hundreds plus three tens plus four units. So 468 shared among two equals 234. So by breaking our number into parts, we can actually share it more easily. Now, you may not know what a number expander is, but you may be able to make one or see how I've used one here. I've got this number 635, and I've made a number expander to help me remember what each digit represents. And then you can use that with different numbers. So after my six, when I open my little number expander, I've got a little part folded that says hundreds. I'm going to close that up now and open the next one. And that tells me that that number is tens. Three tens is thirty. I'm going to close that and then look at my last one, and that's units. So the five in that position represents units, five units or five ones. So you might like to have a go at making a number expander. Place value columns are also a good way to look at how we can break numbers up, and they're similar to number expanders, but you can write them in a table like this. So what we can see is that we have seven hundreds, five tens, and one unit. So now we can write our number as the sum of its parts. 700 plus 5 tens or 50 plus 1. And now we've got three different parts of a number, so we could work on the different parts if we needed to.